here at the new Capenna Championship. I'm going to send it over to Marshall and Paul. Thank you, Maria. It's time for the upper final here. This is kind of the first big inflection point here for the upper part. This is where one player will become our end boss. They will be uh, advancing to the championship match where they'll be basically just waiting until well, as Rich put it, the bloodbath on the bottom part of the bracket ends up playing itself out and producing one player who emerges, and that player will be the person that whoever wins this is going to play against for the championship. So for now, though, we can just sort of settle in. One of these players is going to be in a really great position after this match, and the other one will be fine, too. They get knocked down to the lowers, but they still get a, a, a good spot to work from as well. We've got Simon Nielsen versus Jan Merkel, and uh, it's Jeskai Hinata in the hands of Jan. Simon's taken Esper mid-range this time, Paul. Yeah, and a really interesting choice here, the the Jeskai Hinata deck. Uh, been been pretty good for Jan Merkel. Throughout the course of the tournament, he went 2-2 two and two against Esper. I mean, I imagine if you choose to bring any deck to this tournament, you are, you know, aware of this matchup. So I'm still not sure which side I like in this matchup. Uh, hard to bet against uh, the Esper mid-range deck, just especially Simon Nielsen's team's version of this deck, uh, as they've had incredible success with it. But um, I also want to see some Hinatas and Magma Opuses being cast. Yeah, Jan has uh, definitely been doing his fair share of that. That, of course, is one of the most powerful one-two punches you can have out of this list here from Jan. This he currently a, has half of the combo. This is a mold of five. Yeah, it is a tough one here. For Simon, he's going to keep a four lander with an infernal grasp at the end of the day here. It's going to yeah. be extremely difficult for him to win from this position. Yeah, really, really tough. Simon needs to get, needs to be the aggressor in this matchup. Jan is kind of basically just playing a, a Jeskai control deck, right? With mm -hmm. basically uh, relying on Hinata as kind of its win condition here. So good draw here just to get things going. Hey, Tenacious Underdog, he'll take it, but Flame Bless Bolt was put in this list specifically for that card. There's a few other good targets, but the fact that it exiles here, Paul, big deal. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Kind of coming into this, most of these versions, m most of the Esper midrange decks are playing three to four copies of that card, right? And just having that clean answer, especially when you're playing a control deck, that's where the Underdog really shines, right? Where you run out of resources and you just have this card that can constantly just draw you a card. Mm -hmm. um, it really, really shines in control matchups. Now, we haven't seen a whole lot of control in the standard metagame, no. but this is about the closest thing as you can get to kind of playing against the control deck, Jan Merkel's deck. Yeah, you know, from what we normally see is the other card in hand here for Jan, which is Voltage Surge. That one has been much more popular for any of the decks playing red for its ability to, to nab really important targets with up to four toughness, but Jan has a mix. Yeah, yeah, getting that four damage, of course, to get Rafine off the battlefield, very, very important here. Several ways to make treasure. You do have Fable of the Mirror Breaker, and oftentimes you are going to be discarding Magma Opus in this deck. Yeah, it's also worth noting, you know, if you want to try to figure out kind of how the uh, person is approaching various matchups, you can look at this. He's got three Flame Bless Bolt and one Voltage Surge in the main deck. That kind of shows you where Jan's at. By the way, things going beautifully here for... Jan Merkel, he's got his Fable of the Mirror Breaker going on to Chapter 2 now to further sculpt his hand. Meantime, no pressure, no nothing from Simon Nielsen. He hasn't found anything after that tenacious underdog. Yeah, all he's got is that Infernal Grasp. Now, Jan does have to be mindful of the Wandering Emperor here, right? Simon did go four mana go. Yeah, a little tough here uh, for Jan. He, he did discard a couple of potential spells to try to find more action and end up finding just two lands out of the deal. So he's got plenty of mana. He is working his way up to that magma opus thanks to this attack as well. We may see it just hard cast at some point. Oh yeah, that, uh, you, that's what Jan's looking at at this point, right? I mean, we're already looking at five, two more lands in hand, some attacks here with the fable. And There's a vanishing yes, verse. <laughs> yeah, these removal spells, I mean, they're not, Vanishing Verse isn't great because it doesn't get Hinata. I mean, Infernal Grasp is okay, but again, need to put some kind of pressure here if you're Simon Nielsen. And and uh, and the longer this game goes, the more it'll favor Jan. Yeah, 
Simon might need to pull up his rainy day playlist for this game. This one has not gone well for him. He's got reactive spells, no pressure whatsoever, and Jan has been given a lot of time to sculpt a good hand here. And the gate was a draw step here for Miracle. Yeah, I mean, you heard from Simon's interview uh, earlier. His, main, his primary goal was to make the top eight of a, of a large event like this, right? You know, a pro tour level event, the set championship here. That was his main goal. He's also qualified for the world championship, which was a big, huge goal of his coming in. So now he's just kind of winning this would be a big thing for him. But at the same time, that pressure, right? The tremendous amount of pressure he had going in has been kind of lifted off of his shoulders, right? Winning this event would of course be a huge thing, but but for Simon, he's just like, you know what? It's like, look, I was already sweating throughout the entire course of this weekend. I got all the things that I wanted. So look, I'm just gonna enjoy myself. I mean, to be fair, he's been doing it the entire weekend. Yeah. But... I don't know, when I heard him say that, I kind of wanted to yell at him a little bit. <laughs> he's like, oh, I've never seen myself as a, as a PT champion. I just wanted to top eight. It's like, why not you, Simon? You're an excellent player. You, you top eighted very convincingly here. How about we go for that trophy? You don't get that many shots at these things. This is not the time to let your guard down and say, you know what, I'm just happy. Everything's fine. I don't really care what happens. The interesting part about it, though, <laughs> is that it probably still just benefits him <laughs> yeah. because he's playing calm, loose, good magic here. He's not worried about it, and that can actually be a big advantage. So right. we'll see how and, it plays out for and Simon. And look, I mean, it's not like he's been playing poorly, right? He's been exactly. playing fantastic magic. So... You know, uh, it, it works for him. Uh, for some other people, maybe you just want to lock down, right? And just uh, just make sure you're completely focused. But hey, look, for Simon, it's been working for him. So hey, kudos to you, man. Yeah, I tell you what, the next booster draft I do, I'm putting on a playlist and I'm going to be like, I, I don't see myself as a winner of a booster draft anyway. I'm just here to have fun and we'll, we'll see how it goes. The Simon Nielsen method. All right, so Hinata hits the battlefield, and uh, thanks to that negate drawn last turn from Jan, he's able to protect it here from the uh, from the removal spell, the Infernal Grasp there from Simon. He even finds a backup Hinata here. But what I'm looking at now, Paul, is that Magma Opus. Oh, yeah, because Simon is going to run out. This Wandering Emperor, it will get Hinata. Jan does have the backup, but we're still going to see Magma Opus clean up this Wandering Emperor, put a 4-4 onto the table, and draw some cards. That's right. So Magma Opus. This is the huge moment here for Jan. He's been setting up for this the whole time. And uh, he now can find himself in a position to further his onboard advantage and maybe even lock it up by finding something to protect it. Let's see what right. he finds here. The old two mana Magma two Opus. Two mana Magma Not Opus. Bad. Come on. You can see that He's tapping down the two lands here from Nielsen, though Nielsen doesn't have anything to do with them anyway. Right. And in order to make it as cheap as possible, he spread out some damage across his creatures. It's non-lethal, though. Right. And now uh, Jan can simply just play the backup Pinata, just another giant flyer, and Simon just working with nothing here. Right. Simon needs to find something to reset. Okay, there's an Infernal Grasp, but he's so far behind on board. This clock is no joke. Interestingly, he can kill Hinata here, then take six. He also has to take two from his Infernal Grasp, and he will be facing down a two-turn clock. Yeah. Take the two, go down to 12, and Jan could even copy the 4-4, four, four, right? Get in for two extra points of damage with that right. reflection of Kiki-Jiki. That's right. So land go now from Nielsen with just that grasp. Land off the top of the library for Jan. He is out of gas as well. He's got a couple of spot removal spells and a Jwari disruption that doesn't look like it's going to do anything here. Oh. Okay. So Simon trying to prioritize leaving his uh, keeping his life total as high as absolutely possible. Right. Because at this point, right, Jan has enough mana where he doesn't even need to cheat the Magma Opus. So maybe it's not as much of a problem. You want to preserve your life total there instead of just killing that Hinata. Deserted beach. An unwelcome visitor to the hand here for Simon Nielsen. He does not want to see any more lands. He's seen plenty of those. All right, here's a nice attack for six. Is there? Yes, there is a hive. 
That yep, is, this... however, going to get blasted right out of here thanks to two removal spells. Or actually, just one will do the job here. Voltage yep. Surge thanks to that treasure. Just the Voltage Surge. So we're going to put Simon down to two. Meat Hook Massacre. It's always Meat Hook Massacre. We say that a lot, don't we, would Paul? We do it, yeah. But if you can play out the land, Meat Hook Massacre would stabilize. Oh, that's brutal. Infernal Grasp. He's going to cast it anyways. It's going to cost <laughs> Simon his life here as it does cost two life. So game number one goes to Jan Merkel. He's moved one step closer to really running the tables here in his fourth top finish. Jan has a career that goes back a long way, right? Like Jan's been around for a while and he's had, he's reached success at the highest levels of our game as well, having won a pro tour. He's also been playing since 2004. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I was at that event. It was Pro Tour Kobe. It was a, it was a draft Pro Tour. I believe Jan was 16 years old. So, bit of a prodigy. It, 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 <laughs> yeah, long, long time ago. Yes, kind of dating myself a little bit here. But um, you know, now that Jan's <laughs> qualified, and he's one of the players who's got proven limited chops. Right, we're gonna see limited at the World Championship, and uh, and in Jan. Uh, go, you know, given that he has that ability to play both formats, is going to be a big deal for him. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm interested to see how that goes when we get to the World Championship because there is a crop of players, like a non significant amount, who have played the last few seasons. You know, since we've been in remote uh, mode here, where limited hasn't been much a part of the equation, and it is very much going to be. We heard Mike Segrist, a limited specialist before uh, all of this say I'm really excited to draft against players who don't have as much experience at it as I do yeah I'm now excited for it too <laughs> wait you, you like limited Marshall <laughs> I am right. excited right. for a little boosty D. Uh, now now taking a look at kind of the cyborg plans here I think things do get much better um, as it usually does when you have this matchup of mid-range against kind of more of a controlling strategy, right? Mm -hmm. You get to board out a lot of your slower, clunkier cards, some removal spells that might not be that effective, and you get to bring in counter spells, right? So now all of a sudden, Yon can't just simply tap out, play a Hinata, and think it's going to resolve. Now you have to be mindful that Simon Nielsen could play the Stainful Stroke, right? Now That's you right. have to be mindful that Simon can fight back with cards like Negate. It's worth noting, you know, that Simon's bringing in seven cards from his board, only four from Jan, but the four cards Jan's bringing in are kind of massaging cards he's already got. They're not really fundamentally changing his game plan at all, but that isn't true for Simon. He is changing his game plan, and uh, he, you would think he would be the favorite in any post-boarded game with those changes he could make, but he does have to win two of them. Simon <clears throat> wants a blue source. Oh very, boy. very badly. Uh, perhaps wants it on turn four, actually, because of the Juari disruption in uh -oh. Jan's hand. There's an Amirius call off the top. He's going to have to settle for Luminarch Aspirant becoming a 3-3 already. It is a nice little clock. And if you look down at the hand from Jan, no answer, at least just yet. Yeah. Does have a Valorous Dance, right? So next turn. We'll likely just kind of hope, hey, you want to you wanna pump up that Luminar Casperant? Yeah, what's so the worst my, thing that it, could happen? It, it'll actually turn on my Valor Stance. The tempting thing to do, though, when you do have Fable of the Mirror Breaker and have the ability to play it on turn three is to just run it out. Yeah. Especially since Jan will not be facing any more pressure. He may just say, okay, okay, fine. I'll take the four, but it's worth it to get the Fable down. Don't have to worry about it getting countered. Simon doesn't have blue mana up currently. Yeah, there's another one of them too. Yeah, he's just gonna take the turn off here. Fable of the Mirror Breaker is gonna go on the stack. It does resolve. No blue mana here for Simon, but uh, it looks like it's not gonna stay there long. Yeah, Simon does have an answer for it with Vanishing Verse. Choosing to exile the Ooh, there's a beach. itself. There is the blue source. So he's going to jam this. And, and the pressure is on here. Absolutely. Rafine picks up the counter from Luminarch Aspirant. But with an attack here, Luminarch Aspirant is going to get to connive, which it does. Four damage now coming through. 
And there's some big moments for this game coming up as Jan Merkel is under intense pressure now. He's down to 13. Yeah, and Aqua Dwari Disruption can't run out and can't run out of Hinata this turn. Can choose to kill Rafine though, right? Mm -hmm. While the shields are down, use Valorous Stance, target the Rafine, pay for it, play the Jawari Disruption. And then the only threat that he has to deal with for the time being is that Luminar Gasprint. But he will be able to develop his mana, right? He's attacking, he's certainly attacking this turn. Now has access to five, and then has a lot of different options next turn. He's got a great hand. It's right. just a life total scenario that he's got to worry about. Because yeah, there it is, Luminar Casper coming in again, down to and, eight. And Simon does have a removal spell for Hinata or Goldspan Dragon and a negate to protect the Aspirant. Make disappear was the draw step there. Boy, it, it's easy to figure out. It's easy to see how powerful Fable of the Mirror Breaker Chapter 2 would have been here. You know, when a player's holding and, another one that he probably doesn't have time for and a redundant Hinata as well. Just could have opened up the door that play by simon nielsen just killing that fable before it did anything is really paying off for him now here comes hanada you do see, see magma opus in hand here now that grasp will cost three mana yawn can protect it with make disappear and simon yeah. will not be able to negate it he back. can't negate back either as negate would also cost three mana Simon does not have an untapped land in hand either, so he can't say, okay, fine, if I want to fight that fight, I'll just go to my turn. Right. And if he loses the fight with the Infernal Grasp, then the negate doesn't do as much. So this is, this is tricky. Yeah, I mean, I feel like you probably want to, you know, when you have access to this mana, because you could draw a threat next turn too, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it just... It's so tempting to just run out this grasp this turn. If it gets countered, you still have the opportunity to draw something and run that out when Yan doesn't have any mana up. It also would let you keep negate and the mana necessary so that you could counter a card like Magma Opus potentially. Make disappear throws a wrench in the works. We know about it, but Simon doesn't. Okay, he's going to go for it. The three mana Infernal Grasp. And this is going to prompt action here from Jan. Yes, he is going to go for Magma Opus. Five toughness on the Aspirant. Pretty annoying. <laughs> Should I Opus? He also could counter this with Make Disappear if he doesn't mind getting rid of the Shaman. Right. That's a steep price to pay, though. And there is a window here for Magma Opus to resolve. Yeah, the issue is it does not ha deal enough damage to get the Aspirant off exactly. the battlefield. Still good, right? Still playing a 4-4 four -four mm -hmm. that draws you two cards. But... What did Simon miss there? Did you see that reaction from him? Uh, I think he realizes that he couldn't negate the Magma Opus there because of Hinata's text. Okay. Well, as you said, still an okay play here from Jan. He does have to burn two treasures to get the job done, but he got two cards and a 4-4 out of the deal, and he got to use up his mana for the turn as well, he passes the turn back over to Simon, who finds Tenacious Underdog facing down a 4-4. He's got the Aspirant, and he has his opponent on 8. He could go for a lethal attack here, apply maximum pressure to Yawn. Yeah, so if he blitzes in the Tenacious Underdog and then puts a counter on the Underdog, then no matter what, Yawn would have to block with the 4-4 mm -hmm. and take, at minimum, 5 damage, likely going to just put it in front of the 5-5. Five five. That's right. So this is better just four. because this gives him access to the gate, right? And still has the potential to put Yan down to three. And both of those creatures present a lethal attack next turn. Hmm, underdog, actually just regular hard cast. So just a 4-3. Does allow you to play around Flame Blessed Bolt. 
It's a slightly longer term approach. Does It lets Jan keep a 4-4 on the battlefield rather than forcing him to trade it off or chump block with it. Effectively chump block either way. Yeah, and the 5-5 the five, five sizing is really difficult here from the Jeskai deck, right? A lot of the Very. spells, you, you can deal 4 damage with the Magma Opus, with Voltage Surge potentially, but 5 is tough. And you've already seen Jan Merkel cast the Valorous Dance. There's two copies in the 75. And another Fable. So much action here for Jan Merkel. It's just too much. He had to burn those two treasures last turn. That left him with four mana. He could go up uh, another treasure here if he attacks with the Shaman. But things looking tough here for Jan. I mean, he's got double Goldspan Dragon, Fable, Hinata, another Fable. Like, his hand is absolutely stacked. But he's in a tough spot. He also is on one red mana at the moment, which is limiting his options potentially as well. Yeah, so if he just runs out this Fable, that's basically all he can do. Does now, he attack with a 2-2? It's rough because it, if Simon blocks, what do you do? Voltage Surge is an underdog, and then, and then Simon can still just cast it yeah. from the graveyard, right? Right. So he doesn't attack. He's just going to sit back. Luminarch Aspirant's going to trigger... It was a land off the top for Simon. He's been out of gas for a while outside of that negate, but he is making right. a big attack here. Yeah, and so here's a double block. So now Jan has no board, but gets the Aspirin off the battlefield and only has to deal with this underdog. Now Simon does have negate backup. If Jan just plays a creature, he's okay, right? He can trade with the underdog. But if he tries to just cast a spell in some way to get this underdog off the battlefield, that could mean trouble for Jan. There's an expressive iteration. But this is huge. The Fable gets to get rid of two cards here, and he's got a lot of stuff that isn't doing any good for him. You know, the chances that he casts two Goldspan Dragons this game are pretty low. The chances that he wants to take another turn off for Fable, the Mirror Breaker is pretty low. And same thing goes for Expressive Iteration. He definitely uh, doesn't want that make disappear. That's the first card that he picked. Simon just going, please just play a non-creature spell i want to use this negate it's just burning a hole in his pocket he finds dwari Ooh. disruption and hall and this is going to get negated i think simon's going to steal this one here yeah it does look like it if yon knew simon's hand the correct play would be to just play hinata right yes. just play hinata you have a creature in play right if simon's hand is disdainful stroke you 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 should play fable right but if his mm -hmm. hand is negate then you should play Hinata. Yeah, he's going to go for the Fable of the Mirror Breaker, but that's a perfect negate target. That was Jan Merkel trying to get a round removal. And look at this. It's going to get negated anyway. So no board state left over. And that's going to be a concession. Simon Nielsen. Oh, you can Oof. see the relief on his face. He barely got over the finish line that game. It lined up just how he needed to and not much more. Yeah, a lot of small decision points there for Jan. I'm sure he's likely going to be thinking about maybe all the different things that he could have done in that one um, to uh, uh, just because, you know, when you lose and it's that close and you had that many cards in hand, a lot of times you're going to question, say, okay, what else could I have done in this situation? Now, yeah. um, Jan's going to be on the play this time around. Um, but but yeah, that, that definitely looked like one of those games where Jan maybe could have sequenced things a little bit differently. Those ones are always tough when you have so many options and so many things going on. You you tend right. to look back and say, I don't know. You develop a sense for it, right? right. Where you go, I, I don't know if this is the case here, but where you go, I feel like I could have won that game, right? The, yeah. I don't know exactly what it was. There was some point, some decision, some broad strokes approach that I took that if I would have done it differently, I may have had the tools to actually win that game. Also, by the way, I feel like uh, perhaps Simon paused his, his mixtape. Never mind, it's it's restarting. It's Back restarting. On Back on I, it, it, there was a look of intensity that I haven't seen, so I thought maybe uh, maybe the, the music went out. But. And I noticed that too. All right, game number three <laughs> underway here. Jan Merkel versus Simon Nielsen to see who's going to be our end boss today. They will uh, advance the championship match where they get to actually take a nice little break as well. There's a lot of matches in the lower part of our bracket that have to be resolved before one person emerges to play against either Simon or Jan, whoever wins this game. Yeah. 
excellent and that's, starting That's got to be a benefit too, right? Just being able to kick back a little bit and not have to play a bunch of super high intensity matches where when you get to the end, you might be getting pretty tired. Yeah, that 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 is true. I mean, both of these players are based in Europe, right? Um, mm -hmm. Now, by the time they get to play, it's going to be pretty late, right? They're sure. going to have a very, very long break, um, particularly to the person who wins this event. But even the other player, they don't need to play until you get to the lower final, right? So, That's right. Uh, and it also depends, right? A player like Jan, he's he's pretty known for his work ethic. Wouldn't be shocked if he's just jamming matches the whole time. That's true. Right? You're, you're right. Yeah. So <laughs> just, just stay in limber. Yeah. No, that, that is true. That is how these guys roll for sure. Yeah, Jan's uh, from Germany, but he's he's currently uh, coming to us from Vienna, Austria, Wien. And uh, Simon is coming to us from Copenhagen, Denmark, where he's from. Okay, Tenacious Underdog. Now, this time, though, no Flame Blast Bolt. It is just going to be Voltage Surge. So a temporary answer. Simon says, okay, cool. But Jan has nice answers for the next couple of threats that Simon could play, right? Disruption and Make Disappear, then Memory Deluge. So we'll have answers to this wedding announcement. Then we'll have an answer to what's likely going to be a Wandering Emperor. End of turn. No matter what goes on the stack here, it's going to get disrupted if it costs three and Jan snaps off Rafine Scheming Seer. Oh, now a little bit of a decision, though. There's Fable of the Mirror Breaker, a card you'd love to get down, but how do you pass the turn back over? I feel like this is the turn where you probably just want to keep up Make Disappear or Deluge. Yes. Find land number five and then have Fable plus Make Disappear available if you don't have that, uh, if, you, if you haven't cast it the turn before. Yeah, the, the downside, of course, you know, would be Wandering Emperor, right? Some instant speed threat, but Memory Deluge helps stem that bleeding a little bit. There's Reckoner Bankbuster, though, for Simon, and this lets him keep up Negate, which he's going to use on this Memory Deluge, it seems. Y yeah. I mean, th this is a very, very strong target to go for here. And, and this land was big, though. This that land was huge. big for Mion, just because this allows him to go Fable plus make this appear big draw step there from Jan now back over to Simon and he is facing down two mana here from Jan but uh, he's got a lot of power both players really with nice draws here in game three kind of doing what their deck does I wonder There's if Jan wants to underdog. oh really does he want to just let it well so if you make this appear here Mm -hmm. If you draw a land, you can flashback Memory Deluge. Oh, right? sure. Yeah, you now, can. Now, he's also close to casting this. Yeah, so maybe he just discards nothing. I think I wouldn't right? discard here. Discard nothing, attack for two, then flashback Deluge main phase so it doesn't get countered. And all of a sudden, you get the best two cards. Oh, well. <laughs> you cycle he it. discards you... the coast but yeah. finds it anyway. So yeah. let's see what he does here, because I, I like your idea. He is going to pass the turn back, Okay, though. okay. Playing it a little slower. Can't imagine he's not going to go for the Deluge here. Suppose this does let him keep up Hall. The other thing he could do is try to get another treasure and just cast Magma Opus if, if he prioritizes that. Yeah. But it Deluge does feel has like to be so tempting. Right. It does feel like you'll naturally get there that way. Especially and, if you and, resolve Deluge, right? Right. And passing up the opportunity to spend seven mana. Ugh. Right? Because I you couldn't Deluge, sleep at night if I did that. Right. And and you're so likely to be able to cast Magma Opus next turn anyway. Oh, wow. okay. Patience from Jan Patience. Merkel. He lets that seven mana just evaporate. It'll never come I back. I defer to Jan. He's here in the finals. Absolutely. I imagine that this is the correct line. So. And here we go. Magma Opus goes on the stack. Jan prioritizing, just simply resolving this spell. You know, you can tell that he feels that if he gets to resolve this, it's going to put him in such right. a good position. Obviously, right? It's Magma Opus. Yeah. It's probably the single most powerful spell that people actually put on the stack in the format. But, uh, you know, he had other options there too. Now, a little bit of a whiff here. 
Needle Verge Pathway times two were the two cards that he drew, and that's all he's got in his hand now. Yeah, however, he still has access to that Deluge. And remember, Simon's sitting at 13 life. He's the one that doesn't have the board, right? He's just got a wedding announcement. He's got some 1-1s. One and Jan also sitting with the Hall of Storm Giants in play, That's right? That's right. So could could potentially uh, attack for lethal next turn and force Simon to just chump block with those tokens. Jan taking the lead here. He's got eight power on the battlefield plus the Hall. Simon used to being the player who's trying to do the things while Jan stops him, but that table has definitely turned. There's wedding announcement number two. And Kaito. Is Probably Kaito going to make a 1-1? One, one? Yeah. A bunch of tokens here, just in case Jan has some more ways to get the tokens off. Ooh, oh, and there's a Mangma off draw. the top of the library. We even <laughs> see some emotion from Jan Miracle. It takes a lot oh. to get him excited. But that was massive, and Simon Nielsen's like, don't do it. Don't make my opus me again. You, you, you know when your opponent starts highlighting all your other permanents, you're like, oh, I know what this is. Because yes. it takes time to resolve it, magma opus. Absolutely. It is heartbreaking once you see that start to happen. Simon's going to see the writing on the wall here, and that magma opus, a huge Jeez. blowout here for Miracle. It's going to wipe the entire board now from Simon and get him in for a huge oh, amount of damage. I guess it's not quite lethal. Uh, you can get Simon down to 12. And then hit him and for And then eight. attack for up to 10. Up to 10. If you copy a 4-4. Four, four. Yes. Wow. Could just, Two could... lands off of the last opus, but that revealed the next opus on top. And Jan Merkel is going to go for maximum damage here, reducing Simon Nielsen to just two with a dominating board presence where Simon's just not really built to try to not come back all. from situations like this. Yeah. The, the Esper deck is not necessarily the best deck at coming from behind. It's really great at, at establishing a board and, and putting a lot of pressure on the opponent. But in a situation like this, you know, you can't imagine Simon's kept sweepers in after sideboard in this matchup. So... That's right. right. I'll be taking that now. I think we're going like, to see Jan here yeah. move on to the finals. Championship match acquired here for Jan Merkel. If he can just get those last two points of damage in, and he'll be sitting pretty. He can jam matches. He can take a nap. He can do whatever he wants. He'll, be, he'll have a good chunk of time here while we resolve uh, all the matches down in the lowers. But... Uh, Boy, that's got to be intimidating for the lower players. I mean, Jan looks unstoppable today. Right. I mean, Jan putting himself in position to potentially be a two-time champion here of these incredibly, incredibly high-level tournaments here. Yeah, that's right. Set championship winner, Pro Tour champion. Not, not a bad resume. No. And he kind of snuck up the standings, by the way. You know, you, we, really we, actually, did. we didn't really feature him because he kind of started off with a mediocre record. And then I believe he was eight and three and then just rattled off four straight wins. Incredible. Another player that we didn't see for a while, but now uh, we've gotten used to him being at the top tables. Simon Nielsen still going through the motions here. Is there some way out for him? I don't think so. Doesn't uh, feel I mean, like it. He does get a decent amount of blockers in play here, right? Wedding yeah. announcement's going to flip, but we have a Flame Blast ah. Bolt to get the underdog off the battlefield. Wandering Emperor would, will gain Simon some life. That should do it, though. But, I mean, this is just so much coming in. Let's see. You get two tokens to block the four forest. Hall of, you can also, remember, uh, activate the Hall of Storm Giants, too. Oh, and there's a negate, too, just in case you needed an insurance policy. Right. And he does even activate... has enough mana, You right? still have mana to negate? Yes, uh, yeah. he does. Yeah. So, so this so, is so... perfection here for Jan Miracle. This is, this is why we play decks like this, to get to right. this position. <laughs> Attack Tech with everything and have a everything. counter spell. Yeah. So here comes the team. Simon Nielsen taking a quick look here. He's going to bank bust into a negate <laughs> and then put Wandering Emperor on the stack, but that's going to get negated, and that is going to be 
the match here for Jan Merkel as good games are exchanged. And our upper finals winner is Jan Merkel. Incredible from him. He has really put on a clinic these last this last day and a half and even gets the golf clap there from Simon Nielsen says, great job. <laughs> and I'll remind you, by the way, that uh, Simon's still very much in this tournament. This just puts him down into the lowers. That wasn't him being eliminated or anything like that. And uh, Jan's going to be happy. He gets to, uh... oh, look at that. He's got the uh, dog too to cheer him on. Uh, it's geez. not over, Simon. You, you can still very much win this tournament. Absolutely. Still a great day here for Simon. Uh, and uh, there's the dog for Jan. Now we know the secret, right? He's got the dog there to cheer him on. We'll have to figure out what his dog's name is. But uh, Powered by dog. Yeah, there you go. A victory for Jan Merkel as he is now the end boss.